In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to change the background color in your product shots. It's a really good way to bring extra life into an otherwise dull shot or inject some of your brand into a shot to make a more stylized image. We're going to be working with this chocolate bar from Rice Creative. It's really well designed. I love the design of this chocolate bar. But if I'm honest, I'm a little bit bored by the product shot because it's just shot on a gray seamless. And while there's nothing wrong with that, it's a little bit boring and there's a lot of really cool elements to this brand that I think we can bring out by you know changing the background color so there's a lot of different ways to do this we're gonna start by making a selection of the bars with the pen tool and then we're gonna cut out the shadow separately which is gonna give us a lot of control to move things around and change the background color so we'll start by making a copy of the background layer by hitting command J or control J on a PC um, and we'll turn off the background layer too, so we're just working with this first layer. And we're gonna select the pen tool over here and just go ahead and make a selection. So I'm gonna zoom in and just start going around with the pen tool and making a selection. And if you haven't used the pen tool in Photoshop before, it works just like the pen tool in other Adobe programs. where you make anchor points and there are these handles that help you define curves. And when you make a pen tool selection in Photoshop, it's going to create what's called a path. And that path you can go back and use to make selections, make vector masks, whatever you want to do. I'm going a little fast here, so you can go and make as careful of a selection as you want. But usually for things with hard edges like this, the pen tool is a really good choice. And sometimes it's better to favor the inside just a little bit so you don't get fringing of white. There we go. So I'm going to connect that up and then go over to my paths panel. And when you create a new pen tool path, it'll create what's called a work path, which is a temporary path. So if you rename this, we'll call it chocolate bar front then it'll save this permanently. The work path is just something temporary, so you always want to rename it so that you have it you know, for the rest of the document. I already created a different selection for the back, but what these allow us to do is create selections with them. So if I right click or alternate click and go to make selection, it'll bring up this dialog box, and we're gonna to want to add just a little bit of feathering. In this case, we'll add 0.2 pixels. That'll help, them help make our selection a little more natural. So. We'll do that. You can see it'll give us the marching ants for the selection. And then we'll go back to the layers panel and create a layer mask on this new layer. And so now we have just the chocolate bar itself on a layer by itself. Um, and so now we're going to create another copy of the background layer by hitting Command J. And what we want to do with this layer is make another selection, but this one will be just for the shadow. And this one we actually can be pretty imprecise because we're actually going to be making the rest of the area pure white. So it's not gonna matter that the selection is very um, accurate. So we'll add a little bit of feathering to it just for good measure, two pixels. And I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool. So we wanna come around and just get all the shadow. We don't wanna get this other chocolate bar in there. So we'll be careful not to do that. But we do wanna get this shadow So we'll connect that up. And so here we'll just make another layer mask. So now we basically have this layer, which is um, the chocolate bar and the shadow roughly cut out. And then above that, we have the full precisely cut out uh, chocolate bar. So what we really want to do here is actually tune the exposure of this shadow layer so that any of these light parts of the background are actually pure white. That's going to help us use the shadow information to our benefit. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer by clicking down here and creating a levels adjustment layer. And I'm going to clip it to this layer underneath. So what you want to do is alternate click and go to create clipping mask. And what that's going to do is make it so that this adjustment layer only applies to the layer underneath. Normally adjustment layers will apply to all layers underneath, but with a clipping mask, it's only going to apply to the one layer underneath. So we don't want it to apply to our background layer, so the clipping mask is going to do exactly what we want it to do. 
Um, and then now that we have this layer levels panel, what we can do is just tune the levels and bring this white point way in so that the area around here becomes pure white. And usually you can see kind of like based on these spikes where the white background is, like this big hump is probably the background. You can always check by creating a threshold um, adjustment layer because a threshold adjustment layer, if you turn all the way up to 255, will tell you exactly where pure white is. So right now with it at 255, only things that are exactly pure white are gonna show up as white. And so we know this outside area, which is the only part we really care about, is exactly um, pure white. So we can go ahead and delete that threshold layer because we don't actually want it. And then what we're gonna do is actually set this layer to multiply. Um, and this is the kind of stack that's going to make this work. Because now if I create a solid color adjustment layer and set it to a random color, just to test it out, and I'm gonna place it down at the bottom of this stack here. The way this is gonna work is we have this layer here. If I turn off the top layer, this layer is giving us shadow information. And then this top layer is coming over the top and bringing this opaqueness that is going to block out the background color. So this combination is going to make this work where we preserve our shadow information. And that's really the key to making this look natural. So I'm actually gonna group up these things here and we'll name it chocolate bar front. And now that we have it grouped like this, we can actually move this around and it's gonna come with the shadows and everything with it. And we can just do whatever we want with it, including things like copy it. So if we wanna make a bunch of copies, that's well within our power. For the background layer, um, a lot of times it's nice to choose something that is part of the brand or complements the brand. In this case, we can just pick one of these colors here. So if I choose this blue, um, that's gonna look really nice. But one tip that I have for you is, since there's texture to this surface, it's hard to get the right blue. Like depending on where I click, I get a totally different color. So what you can do is in the eyedropper tool at the top, change it from a point sample to one of these average samples. So if I choose 31 by 31 average, it's actually gonna take 31 pixels by 31 pixels and average out the color value for that area. So now whenever I click, no matter where I click, I basically get the same thing. So I could do that or I could choose the orange if I wanted to, that's probably a little bit intense. So maybe we'll stick with the blue. But you can see it's starting to inject a little bit more life into the shot. And we can do the same with the back as well. So if I turn the background back on and make another copy of this, we'll turn off our, or actually we'll bring our color fill underneath it so we can see what we're doing here. There we go. Um, I can make a copy of the back as well. So I already made a selection for this. I'll do the same thing. I'll right click, create, make selection on the back path. And then we'll go through the same process. So I'll make a layer mask for this. And then I'll actually create another copy of the background layer. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and select much more roughly. There we go. Create another layer mask for the shadows. Set this to multiply. And then we're just gonna go ahead and make a level adjustment layer and bring the whites way in. So you can see before I do this, all the color from the light parts of the background actually bleeds through. So this levels helps us just eliminate that. There we go. So we can group that up as well. Call that chocolate bar back. And now we have this arrangement. We can go ahead and maybe slide that one over here. So there you go. And there's more fun things you can do with the background. Like maybe you want to create some kind of composition. where you use multiple colors from the brand. Or another possibility is you can bring in an image. So you can bring in a texture. Here I'm gonna drag in this image of a marble texture and maybe I'll slide this up like this. 
And when you select a photograph like this, you just want to make sure it's shot from the right perspective and the right scale. So I purposely shot or purpose, purposely chose a background marble texture that was shot directly from straight down and that the texture was not too zoomed in or too zoomed out relative to the size of the chocolate bars for it to be believable. So when I slide this in and put it underneath all these shadow layers, you can see it instantly looks like it belongs. So that's the secret to um, editing the background color of your photos. To summarize, you wanna cut out your chocolate bar or whatever you're working with and cut out the shadow separately and set the shadow layer to multiply and then use a levels adjustment layer to make sure that everything in your shadow layer that is part of the background goes to pure white. And then that stack of the multiplied shadow layer plus the regular image set to normal is gonna create a uh, piece that you're gonna be able to move around and all the shadow information is gonna go with it. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and change your background layer and it'll, it'll work really well. So hope that was helpful and see you in the next video.